is they're not just one path that's the same. It's called a compound path. Complex. Yeah, compound. And the little parts of the path are called subpaths. Okay? Just so you know. So if you have subpaths and you use the break apart, then the break apart pieces will be the subpath. Otherwise, if I were to break apart that donut, I could obtain that inner circle as an object. Okay, division. Here is <coughs> where the path was in common between the two objects and broke it into two parts. Okay? Now, the cut path turned, uh, actually did something similar to division, but it only retains the path but it did cut the path, okay? And you, I know you're saying, well, where would, I, where would I use these commands? Believe me, when you, get, when you start doing stuff, you'll say, you know, what I want to do is I want to cut this little piece out and I want it to go over here. You're <coughs> using these things before you know it, okay? Your object now, remember all of this is going to be on the presentation, you got it. Just let it flow, guys, let it flow <laughs> over you. You're only really, what you're trying to do here is, uh, Know that it, yeah, I remember there was something about that. Nope, okay? no, that it's there. Yeah, that's what we're trying to do here. Okay? Now, combine, okay, the two objects are combined into a compound path. And you see, and he, I don't know if you can see it here, but there's a, you can see path where the square rectangle was and uh -huh. the path. But now, what did it do? What color it's is it? It's the top layer. It's the top layer, okay? So something to know. And then break apart. Now this is the one I was telling you about. If you have subpaths, then mm -hmm. you hit the break apart, you can actually turn it into two parts again. Just now, on both but remember, you, every, now, th is this the same as the original two parts we had way back when? No. 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 They have the fill and stroke of the original object. Okay. Now, this is complicated. When you read this, you're going to say, well, you know, I don't really understand what he was trying to tell me. Uh, I'm going to give you another perspective. I wrote this stuff that you just saw. It was my take on how I interpret it. Here's another person's take on it, and there are, uh, there are many, many different views of how this does, and, uh, how these commands work in Inkscape on the web. But I wanted to give you one link that you could use. <coughs> well. You'll have to do it with the presentation because uh, obviously I didn't put the uh, H the URL. Huh? Yeah, I might change that to the URL. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. But this is has yours has the objective of the laser co cutter, which is a subset and a. So well, those commands are not laser cutter specific. But that's where you're but, going. Yeah, well, I what I tried to do was how I saw it. Right. Okay. And that way you can look at it and see that perspective. And then some of them, some of the ways I say are going to make sense to you, but there'll probably be one or two that you say, I don't understand. I'm saying there's lots, those commands are covered over and over and over again because they are confusing on the web. Okay? All right. Project number one, and it's a biggie. Okay, so we're going to hold off. I mean, what I want you to do on this is. Let it flow, guys. Let it flow. Remember, you got the you got the script. Don't worry about it. But just kind of follow what's going. Okay. Here, here are a couple of parts from a robot. Uh, this is what we're going to actually go through, real right here. But I want to. Uh, there's a couple of things that we're going to do. This is a screw and forest miter tenon joint. And that's one of the ones that we're going to make templates for so that you can make those very quickly. Boom, 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 boom. And that's what you want to be able to do. And you can see it's really good for 90 degree turns. Okay. Uh, the other thing that we're going to, so we're going to see how to make uh, rectangles and parcel circles. We're going to 
We're going to show how to round the edges of a rectangle. We're going to how to align multiple objects and how to make a screw locked Morse tenon joint and how to use a snap to guides and how to copy and paste parts. If we only get through this one, this was a big one. And some of the other, the next ones are smaller and more probably going to be, you know, hopefully after this one you'll have a good feel for it. Uh, here's the, for the, the, this joint. These are the two drawings of what I used. And uh, so you have all the dimensions there and we'll, we'll go from there, okay? Boy, I hope this works. Okay. All right. All right. The first thing I want to do is make sure that I have the snap on. Okay. And I want to have only the guide. I don't want to have, just want this, whoops, the, gu the guides on the snap modes. And I also want to have the snap nodes or handles. So these three icons I want down. All right. Okay, we're going to create three rectangles. So I go to the rectangle tool and I create, create three rectangles. Now, okay, first thing. Notice I didn't care. I just created them. Okay. So now, why did I do this? Now I'm going to go up to select. All right. And I'm going to change the. Now you notice. Now, I'm not sure why this is in Inkscape, but you always have to do this too. You always have to change your inches. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to define these as, uh, well, let's see here. Box one, box <coughs> two, I'm going to move this guy, and box three. All right, so for box one, oops, I'm going to select it, and I'm going to go up here and make that. 0.7, and then I'm going to go over here and make this 0.14. Cool. Okay. Now, notice I didn't have to screw around with. Oh, I got it over to that midpoint. I got it up to here. Don't worry. Use the text boxes. So now I'm going to go to uh, the second cycle, and I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to make this one. 0.11 and I'm going to make the other side 0.26. All right, then I'm going to get the third one and I'm going to change it to 0.3 and 0.64. Oops. Oops. Right, let's see. Get something on here. Uh, point six four. Uh, I'll this guy back up. Now I'm going to move them all kind of close together so that we can see what's going on. Point <coughs> nine two. I'm scroll my mouse bar with the shift key down. Then I'm going to hit the control. Scroll, scroll in. Okay? So that's how I got in there. Now, okay, I'm going to open up, I'm going to the object tool. And what tool did I say you're going to use an awful lot? A line. And that's down here, line and distribute. And there it is. Now, let's go over it just a little bit. This basically says I take my groups of object and line it to uh, an anchor object on so that the left and right are touching. Uh, here, I bring all the objects and line them up to the right, <coughs> to the left, I'm sorry. Here, I do a vertical, I <coughs> the vertical centers of all my objects and line them up. <coughs> this one, I do uh, align all the right sides of my objects. Okay, and here, I align all the right, left sides of my object to the right side of my anchor. Okay? We won't, the ones we'll be using the most are these three in here and their equivalents that are down here. 
which are just the vertical, top and bottom, instead of left and right. Okay? Mm -hmm. So those are the ones we'll be using the most. Now, so we're going to take, this is box one, this is box two, and this is box three. So we're going to select uh, box two, and you select multiple items by holding down the shift key. So now I've got selected boxes two and three, and I'm going to align their left edges. Okay? Then I'm going to center on their horizontal axis. Fast. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to go, ooh, I got it over here. Whoop, I moved over one too many. All right? So now I'm going to group boxes two and three. Now remember the group commands are under here, or if you're, like I say, I actually find it easier to keep my hand on the mouse than use the, the, the shortcut keys. Now it could be because I'm left-handed. And maybe for a right-handed person, the shortcut key could be easier. I don't know. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, now we're going to select. We're going to hold the shift key down and select this guy. All right. And now we're going to align the left edges again. Okay. And then we're going to center again on the horizontal axis. Okay. We're going to ungroup objects two and three. Okay, wait a minute, hold on a second. I did got a mistake here. I want to I wanted to do that not on the left, but on the right. Write that down. Okay. Now, I'm going to unselect. To select this guy. Now, what did, remember, this one was the one that was grouped, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, I'm going to object, ungroup. And I'm going to collect this guy this guy. Alright. So I've selected box one and box two and I'm going to do path union. Okay. Alright. Okay, I'm going to deselect. Uh, I'm going to create a vertical guide. So remember a vertical guide comes from the horizontal ruler. <laughs> I'm just going to put it in that very special place that I just put it, which was anywhere. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to select the T-shaped box, and move it over, and watch what happens. Do you see that? It just jumped on. It. All right. Now I'm going to deselect that and grab this box. <coughs> Flip this guy. I think I, yeah. I think I, uh, somewhere I got off the uh, of that. Okay, now this guy, I'm going to bring him forward, and what's going to happen to him? <laughs> he snapped too. So the nice reason, and the reason why you want to do do this with the guide and not by hand, is because when you're moving them manually, all right. So let's say these are the two borders. You know, these are the stroke lines. Uh, for one to do a union, they have to be at least direct, actually perfect on each other or slightly overlapped. If they're slightly overlapped, you're going to change their dimensions a little bit. All right? If you're doing this by hand, you're going like, oh, I'm getting close, I'm getting close, I'm getting close, I'm getting too far up, I'm too little, I'm little. Yeah. By using the guide and snapping one edge and the other edge, they're perfect. Just another little one of those shortcut deals. All right. Now, so I'm going to do select both of them. I hold the shift key down to it. And I'm going to do another object union. You, you don't have. Do a, you need to do you need to do a center again? Yeah, because you don't have a horizontal axis. Okay. 
we lost that. It looked good, but it's uh, Yeah, up. thanks guys. Keep me. Okay, so I, I want to hit a horizontal arch. See it move. Oh, it was pretty. off. Yeah. It was off. Good catch. And uh, now we're going to do uh, a path union. Okay, and there. Now, we've got the part that's going to be the T slot. It's our, this is the T slot template we're going to use. All right. Now, so I'm going to hit control here and lower off. And I'm just going to move this and save them over off on the edge of the page there. Okay. I'm going to put them over here on my desk. All right. Okay. And just to keep things uh, uh, clearing clean here, I'm going to uh, I'm going to de uh, delete. You know, I thought it was delete. Uh, I'm deleting the guide. Uh, it's just that's just because guides will get piled up and it'll be hard for you to mess with them. Okay. Now we're going to make the Morse te uh, uh, template. So we're going to start off by creating uh, another specially sized box and another specially sized circle. Okay. Now I'm going to select that and I'm going to take the circle and I'm going to change it to 0.14. 